Welcome to Cook 30 for Kids. I'm Chef Jeremy Dixon from the Revive Cafes in Auckland, New Zealand. And today I'm going to share with you how you can make a delicious restaurant quality meal in your very own home using whole food ingredients. Today we have two very special guests for us. We have Shai from Georgia and Jonathan from Michigan. Welcome to Cook 30 guys. Thank you for having us. It's great for you to be here. So I just want to ask you some questions just so the viewers can get to know you. So shy. what are some of the things you get up to at home? Well, I love basketball and I love cooking. Well, cooking is great. Basketball, so you're good at basketball? I am good at basketball. Oh yeah, well I think we should see how good she is. What do you think? So see these cherry tomatoes? I want to see if you can do a three-pointer into those glasses over there. Into the cups? Okay. Yep, yep, so I'll give you three of them. See if you can get one in there. See if you can get them into those glasses. <laughs> Gotta go high, you know, backboard. Whoa, oh. nearly. Try again. And again. Oh, oh so well. close. Try again. Oh, so <laughs> close. They were very close. We'll give you some more practice later. Well, that's great. You love basketball. That's awesome. Yes. And cooking. So you, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a chef and I want to open up my own restaurant. Fantastic. Well, that's what I did 12 years ago. That's a great ambition to have. That's wonderful. So I'm sure you've, you've got some great chef skills here. That's great to meet you. Nice to meet you too. And Jonathan, what do you get up to at home? I like baseball. Baseball? Okay, you need to try some tomatoes too. We'll give you um, yellow tomatoes. We want to see if you can um, see if you can hit the glasses. So do a pitch, and we want to see if you can hit one of those glasses there with your pitch, okay? Whoa, and the, and the top as well! Whoa, two. Oh, <laughs> and it bounces off the plate. That's great. <laughs> well, you love bas baseball, that's excellent. So you can, sports and cooking go together really well, don't they? Yeah, yes. <laughs> That's excellent. Well, lovely to meet you guys, and welcome to, to Cook 30 for Kids. We're going to have a lot of fun today. So, let's see what is on the menu. We have zucchini noodles with red pepper and almond sauce. Yum! And for the sweet, we have messy wild berry dessert. That sounds awesome. Okay. Before we start, we want to make sure our kitchen is ready for us. You can't just waltz into a kitchen and expect food to just make itself. So prep is prep is a word that we use in, in restaurants and cafe, which means getting ready the day before. So we've got the bench or the counter here cleared. We've got ingredients out that we're going to use. Um, we've got a, a pan on the stove and we have uh, got a great attitude and ready to go. Yes. yes. Let's get cooking. So we are making zucchini noodles, and these are sometimes called zoodles, and they're basically a raw type of noodle. So what we're going to use, we've got this cool machine here called a spiralizer. Have you seen one of these before? Yes. You have, you haven't? So what you do, these just make really, really cool little um, zoodles. So what we'll do is, you need to start with some zucchini, or well, they call them courgettes where I come from, and what we'll do is we'll just cut the end off like that. And you want to make sure you've got big straight ones. They need to fit in there, so you need to be able to cut it off probably about there. So do you have this at the Revive Cafe? Um, we have one that's similar but bigger, but yes, yes, this is a very awesome thing to make, make them. So it's a great, mm. great chef's tool. And what you do, oh, the trick is to make it really straight. So I was a bit, bit on an angle there, so we'll, we'll make it so it's straight. If it's wonky, it goes all over the place. So basically just plug it in there. And these are available online. They're not very expensive at all and they make a very nice textured type of thing. It's a great gift to give someone. My mom should probably buy it. Yes, or you could get one for Christmas. Or you get you one for Christmas, seeing mm. as you're the chef mm. now. So what you do is you just turn it, and basically as you're turning, you push, put the pressure on, and out the end comes this lovely That's spaghetti nice. type noodles. Look at that. Isn't that cool? So um, Shai, if you can start turning yeah. that and give it a go and get, get it turning. So just keep turning and put, keep the pressure on. You kind of want to keep pushing this way and it will come out like that. I'll just get a bowl to put it in. So can you use this with other vegetables? Yes, you can. You could use it with um, things like sweet potato, um, if you get a butternut and cut it properly, um, beetroot or even carrots. So it's very, very versatile. So you can make some lovely dishes. Look at that. Look at this beautiful 
texture, I'll smooth this along a bit so it's going to come out there. So keep on turning. Looks pretty cool. So while you're going, I'll show you another thing. So if you don't have a spiralizer, you can still make this recipe at home. Excuse me, I'll just show you here. So what you do is you can basically make cut diagonal, sl thin slices of zucchini, like that, and you can put it together, and then you basically just cut it really, really thinly like that. Now it won't have the spiral shape, but it will still give you lovely, really thin slices or really long julians. So if you don't have a spiralizer, you can still use a different style of cut. Whoop, it's coming apart there to make them nice and thin. Mm. Does that look exciting? Yes. You've got to have good knife skills and a good sharp knife there. So it's just an alternative you can use. Keep it going. Keep it, oh, lovely. Look at that. It's coming Ooh. out beautifully. Keep turning. Keep the pressure on. So when, so when did you find out about these? About a couple of years ago I saw one in a, in a recipe book and thought that sounds a great way to make, make ingredients. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's just a great way to do things raw. So I'll just get the next one ready for you. Because we'll probably need about two or three I think. Yep. Get the pressure on. You can actually push this, I'll keep pushing it here so you can, yep, so you keep turning and I'll put the pressure on. There you go. Yep, lovely. It takes a little bit of work, but as you can see, within a very short time, that we end up nice. with a really good volume of, um, of these noodles, or pasta, whatever you want to call it. There's actually some raw food restaurants that only do things raw, and they do things like this, and they call it pasta or noodles. So at my cafe, we do do this. We're not a raw cafe as such, but we do use lots of raw ingredients. Keep turning, looking great. So there we go, look at that. We've got a bowl full of these wonderful zucchini noodles. That'll do well. We're going to put this in this lovely big dish here. You can get these from a lot of um, stores that sell plates and things. And a nice big white dish is always really beautiful. Before we do, I'm going to put a bit of olive oil in it. So if you can sprinkle some olive oil in there. Um, and that will just give it a little bit of, just a little bit, you probably want about probably a teaspoon or so. Just, yep. Cool, yep, beautiful. And just toss it around a little bit with your hands, just to kind of mix it through. So what kind of olive oil do you usually use? Extra virgin is the best one to use. It's generally the healthiest. Um, other oils you can use that I like using is sometimes, you know, rice bran oil or um, coconut oil, but everyone's got their own favorite mm -hmm. oils to use. But olive oil is great for this. Okay, if you want to platter it in there, lift it up. See if you can put it in without touching the sides. And just, let it, just let it fall naturally, lovely. Very cool, yep. And throw that in as well on the top. Doesn't it look beautiful? That looks amazing. Very cool. Okay, so we'll come back to that later. And also by putting oil, it will kind of help stop it from drying out as well. I'll just put these over here out of the way. So now we want to make the sauce. And this um, red pepper almond sauce is really, really yummy. So we've, I'd like to start with cutting up some red peppers. So um, I'll get you to do that, that um, shy. So we're just going to chop them up like this, and we're going, to, we're going to blend them up later so you don't have to be too fussy. So if you can just kind of just cut them up into rough chunks like that, both of those peppers there. Give that to you there. And if you, if you can put a little bit of oil in that pan, where did the oil go? Oh, I'll put it over here. Oh, here it is. A little bit of oil, just a touch of oil. And we're going to add some almonds, and we're just going to just, just a little bit, just a teeny weeny bit. Perfect, that's all you need, just about a teaspoon. And if you want to put in around about, um, how many, how much do I need? Some almonds. We want half a cup. So just keep putting them in until I say stop. So are the roasted red peppers making the sauce a brighter color or a brighter flavor? Both. So it'll give it a great, a nice kind of red pepper flavor and also um, make it, yeah, give it a beautiful color. So normally you have like a tomato sauce on an Italian pasta. This is kind of like a difference to kind of a, an Italian sauce. Yep, throw another handful on. That's great. Yep, and a bit more. One more handful. Wonderful, and we'll just give it a bit of a, a shivvy around so it's slightly coated. So we're just going to just lightly toast these and uh, in the the, um, the red pepper as well. I keep wanting to say capsicum because where I come from, we call these um, capsicums in New Zealand. <laughs> In many different countries, everything, all the vegetables have different names, like eggplant is aubergine, um, the zucchini is courgette, um, and there's lots of different names. Cilantro is coriander, so it's very, very interesting. Coriander. I've heard of coriander before. Well, you can get coriander powder. So the coriander that grows into leaves, at the roots, you basically grind that up and dry it up and makes powder. 
and you call that coriander powder. I haven't really heard of like that before. Yes, yeah, so yeah, it's all very different. So if you can, um, if you want to put some of the um, red peppers into the um, pan, make sure you don't get, get knifed while you're doing it. And um, so we're going to just, these are going to, the flavours will come out when we cook them. And I'll give you a, just don't get burnt when you get in there, it's very hot with the gas. If you want to stir it as well, wonderful. I'll give you the stirring spoon, I'll grab those, put them out the way, and just keep stirring them around a little bit. And that'll just bring out the flavours being nice and toasted. Okay, so I could probably get a few bits off the edge there as well. I'll we'll just, oh, okay. yeah, just chop some bits off there. Don't waste too much. There you go, a few seeds go in, it's not, not too bad. There you go. Fire those in. Alrighty. So that's underway with the sauce. We've got the, the, um, the zoodles or the zucchini noodles there. Um, we're also going to add on top. Oh, you got a question? So, how long do you have to cook this? Probably around about five minutes on a very high heat and that way the almonds will get toasted and the zucchini will start to get soft and lovely. Now garlic, we need some garlic. Garlic adds a really nice flavour and intensity to food. Um, here's a great garlic press. So if you want to put some, put two cloves of garlic in. Where um, do you get the garlic crusher? Garlic crusher, I think this one comes from Germany um, and it's a really good one so get a good quality one. As with any kitchen tool, you're better off buying a really good item once and it'll last you your whole life um, rather than going for um, buying a cheap one that's going to break in a couple of weeks. Miss Brenda actually gave me this, to, this one to me. She reckons it's the best one in the world. So I'm giving it a bit of a try out, but I've been pretty impressed so far. So you can put that in there and uh, squeeze it in. Will, that, will it fit? I think it will nearly fit. If you want to see if you can squeeze that in the, um, into the, into the, um, the pan over there. See if Miss Brenda's garlic press works at all. Give it a big squeeze. Oh, get a squeeze harder. Oh, do you want a hand there? Yes, please. It is a pretty big piece of garlic, so. Uh, 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 uh. Oh! <laughs> there we go. We got some garlic in there. It's probably a good garlic press. Okay, can be a little bit difficult. If you want to make it easy, you can take the skin off. That makes them work easier. So look at that, so you can smell that. Can you smell that garlic? Yeah. That smells amazing. That's a good oh. smell. Yep, smell of garlic being, being um, fried is just beautiful. I really, I like garlic on different, like on a sandwich like sometimes. Really? Raw tastes, garlic? It, it tastes good. It's really good and, for you to get rid of any And there kind of... are some like crackers that you can buy at um, Walmart or yeah. Meyer and they have, they have this garlic taste. So really? Oh wow, well, yeah, so it's a delicious. nice taste. It's usually nice when it's cooked through things. Now we want to have some cherry tomatoes. So if I can get you to um, cut up some cherry tomatoes. I'll just um, clean the knife here, excuse me. So is all of this getting pureed? Um, that's getting pureed to make the sauce. This stuff here is going to be garnishes, so we're going to get on with that now. So if you can just chop them into, just like into half. I'll get you a bowl to put them in, um, and we use it as a garnish later. So if you can just start chopping those into half, that'd be wonderful. Just in half cooked. Cool. One way you can do it is, is you can actually just grab the two like that, and then you can actually cut between them like that. Oh. That makes it easier, and this chance of getting your finger when you're cutting. We're going to add some um, okay. lemon juice as well to the to the sauce. I add lemon juice to a lot of my foods except for some desserts. Really? You can even add the desserts as well. Lemon juice is a great flavouring, makes things taste, kind of just adds a nice zesty flavour to it. So I'm squeezing it through my fingers so I'm catching the, um, the pips. The lemon juice looks really interesting whenever it's just going on the skillet like <laughs> It that. is, isn't it? It's kind of <laughs> evaporating. So what happens is all the, the moisture in it is evaporating, but left behind is all the lovely tangy flavour. Here we go. How's that? I'll just add a little bit of salt. Just a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. Keep stirring around. That's great. I can use more tomatoes as well. Probably okay. double that amount. Keep on chopping. That's going really well. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to blend that up. Very now it's had a, had a chance to kind of cook. And seeing as it's hot, I'll just give you a hand with this. And we're just going to put it in the blender. Just like this. Oh, you can feel the flame coming up and getting me there. 
Just put that in there like that. There we go. So we're going to make this lovely sauce. Oh, I won't get that. It's going to be very hot there, so I'll leave that there. We're also going to add some flaked yeast. Have you heard of flaked yeast before? Yes, we usually use it whenever we make um, like yeast flakes and another ingredient, and we use that as Parmesan cheese alternative. Yes, it is. That's great. You can actually blend it up with cashew nuts and make Parmesan cheese, or healthy Parmesan cheese. That's a great recipe. So going to put it in two tables. There's a big, big two tablespoons in there just to give it a nice cheesy flavour. I'm just going to add a little bit of water just to get it started. Sometimes you might need more, but we'll see how it goes. And we're going to blend it up. So Shy, if you can push the go button, push the high button. Ready, set, go! Blend it up. This will become a really nice sauce. Look at that going. Isn't it good? A blender is a really great thing to have in your kitchen. Okay, you can push stop. And there we have this lovely sauce. Look at that. Doesn't it smell amazing? That smells oh, awesome. That smells so we'll reserve good. that and we'll pour it over the noodles later. If you've just joined us on Cook 30 for Kids, we are having a lot of fun in the kitchen. We have Shy from Georgia and Jonathan from Michigan. What's on the menu today, guys? Well, zucchini noodles with red pepper and almond sauce. Yum. And we have sweet, messy, wild berry dessert. That sounds delicious. Alrighty, let's get back into it. I just love these noodles here. I mean, look at these things. Aren't they great? I mean, look, you can kind of pick them up. And look at that. Look how beautiful and just lovely they are. It's kind of good to let the gravity fall on things. They are going to taste amazing. So try and arrange them so some of the dark green stuff is near the top, because that looks the best. So we've got our sauce done. We've got the, the noodles done. We just need to do the dessert. So this is going to be a really fun dessert. So Shai, if you can grab those glasses there with the, with the board and bring it around. Okay. And if you can go to, the, we'll go to the fridge here, we'll just collect some berries. Because this is going to, if you want to grab all those, grab some raspberries, some strawberries and some blueberries down the bottom. And we're going to make a really, really fun dessert. So we're going to start by making a cashew cream that's going to go over it. So we're going to need for the cashew cream. So Shai, if you can measure out one cup of cashew nuts into the blender. And I'll pour in half a cup of water. So just, just pour them into there. That's great. And I'll put in half a cup of water. Half a cup. Is this cool. good? Perfect. Now just put a little bit of maple syrup in here to sweeten it. You could also use agave um, nectar. At or... home, we have we do our own maple syrup. Really, really from maple trees. Yes. That's fantastic. Does it taste nice? Yes. Oh, that's great. So we're going to put it in here and blend it up. Where's the lid? Here it is. Found the lid. Always lose the lid. So let's blend it up. And this is lovely. So it's nice and creamy. So give it a few, a few seconds here to go nice and creamy. Okay. And there you go. Look at that. It's nice and you want it so it's just pourable. Um, so it's runny, but it's not too runny. So you kind of want it like that. So we'll leave that in there for, for later. So what we're going to do is we're going to put all these berries in here. So we're going to start off with if you guys can just open some of these things. Now you can use any. Oh, we've got a mouldy one on there. We'll get rid of him. And um, the others look good though. So just, just put, start putting some of this fruit into here. Now with the strawberries, sure, I'll get you just to chop some of the ends off. And it's with strawberries it's quite nice, so choose a nice strawberry. So chop the end off and then quarter it like that. There you go. So if you can, um, we'll put some berries in. So what we'll do, we'll start, with, um, we'll start with blueberries on the bottom. And if you want to start, oh there you go, there's a knife. I want to quarter a few of those. Any that are looking as though they're damaged, don't use them. And throw them in there. So grab a. So when I, in Cadillac, we have they have this um, berry picking place where you can put pick blueberries. And over by um, in another county called yep. um, well near a town called McBain, they have um, a place where you can pick 
your own strawberries. It's fun picking your own berries and your own fresh fruit, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Okay, we'll put a few more blueberries in, so put, put some more in. Da -da -da. Yep, that's great. Give you a hand there. So you want to cluster these berries, not have them in, indiv in different kind of mixes. And then what we're going to do is going to pour a little bit of um, this over it. A little bit of this. Da -da -da -da. And then we're going to now put the strawberries on. So if you want to put some strawberries in, put some of those strawberries that we've done in there. Just line it up like that. I'll just go to the fridge and get some cherries as well. So I couldn't find any fresh cherries, but we've got some frozen cherries, which are really nice as well. So we can do a combination of frozen and fresh fruit. Sometimes when I first try something, yes. sometimes I'll be like, I don't like it. Yep. And then a lot of times I try it one more time to yep. see <laughs> if it's just my taste buds or is it me. That's great. And I tried cherries one more time and it was delicious. Oh, brilliant. That's wonderful. So gonna, that's great. We're just going to do another little bit of cashew cream here at the top. There we go. Okay, and now we're going to put some raspberries in. So if you want to throw some raspberries in, put some of them in. I'll just give you a hand. We've kind of got a, got a clock to beat. We want 30 minutes is all we've got, so we've got to cook fast. There we go. There's a few in here that aren't that nice, but it, most of them are absolutely fine. There we go. Another little bit more. And we'll put some cherries on top. Can you also use granola for this recipe? Actually, that would be a fantastic idea. Just some granola sprinkled over the top would be beautiful. Look at those amazing fresh cherries. Put those in there as well. So if you want to grab that board over there, Shy. Fill up and put some, put some more blueberries on top as well. Fill the glasses up. And this bit, if next is coming up, is the messy part, which you'll all be looking forward to. Whoop, there's blueberries going everywhere. I'm going to make sure we fill the glass up. And also we're going to make a little chocolate sauce. So we're going to use some carob powder. Have you guys used carob powder before? I do. Me and my mom use it my a mom, lot. My mom uses carob powder sometimes. Oh, that's good, yeah. It's a nice alternative to using cocoa. It doesn't have any caffeine in it, and it's a much healthier option. So what we're going to do is just put some in there, and we're going to put a little bit of water in. One of my favorite recipes that my mom makes with carob powder is um, chia carob pudding. Chia carob pudding is awesome. That is a, a really lovely recipe, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Okay. That smells absolutely amazing. You can amazing. smell it, can't you? Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's a little drizzle, and this is just water and carob powder just to drizzle over. So the next part is where it gets really fun. So we're going to move this out the way. I'm going to serve this on a board, and basically we're going to put these guys here like this, and we're going to put a little bit more cashew cream over, over here, and then we're going to start getting really messy, so check this out. So we're going to put some carob over it, but we're not just going to put it on, we're going to drizzle over the board as well, oh. over the glass, and we're going to have so much fun, it's going to be drizzling down. Now we'll get some honey here as well. So if you want to drizzle some honey over. So when you drizzle it, try to just go back and forward. So try and, yep. Lovely, that's ah. fantastic. On the board, get lots of the board as well. Excellent. Isn't this great? Yes. It's looking great. Lots of spots over there and stuff. My friend's mother gets honey from the bees. That's a great, yeah, that's great, isn't it? We, have, awesome. we have beehives on our If you want to put place. some nuts, sprinkle some nuts over it. Make sure you sprinkle them over the, um, that's, that's probably enough, that's excellent. Yeah, just... she has like 6,000 beans. Really? It is. Like... And sprinkle the nuts on the board as well. This is a messy dessert, don't just get it on there. And try and stick some nuts on the side of the glass as well. <laughs> How's that? Awesome. Cool, yep, so there we go. And that is the messy dessert. What do you think, guys? I Put a bit of maple syrup on just for extra, extra measure. I I think, I, th I think it's fun that you did it from messy also as well <laughs> as doing it inside the glass. Exactly. And to finish off, we're just going to put some of these cherry tomatoes over this, these here like that. And just Ooh. make it look beautiful. And that then we'll, just before we serve it, we'll put some of the sauce over as well and dress it with some almonds. How's that looking, guys? That Are is you looking good. forward to eat that? Yes. yes. It looks amazing. So with that garnish, you can see this looks absolutely beautiful. So you ready to eat, guys? Yes, I can't wait. 
So can you say grace for us, Joy? Yes. Dear Lord, bless this food. Help us to strengthen and nourish our bodies. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Let's get into it. So this is a really messy day. Look at that. Doesn't it look good? Whoa. 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 <laughs> we'll just put some in your bowl here. It gets quite messy. It all joins together, so we might have to cut a bit off. There we go. And some for you as well. That beautiful sauce is really, really nice. And that raw zucchini noodles is just amazing. It smells so good. It is. And it's going to be taste amazing too. Some for me. So this is a really easy dish for you to make at home. It's raw and really healthy using lots of whole foods. What do you think, guys? I think this looks just like regular noodles. It does. No, much healthier. We hope you've learned some great tricks and skills today. We thank you for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you next time on Cook 30 for Kids! Woohoo! Awesome, guys.